and gentlemen, please welcome Mayor of Schenectady, Gary McCarthy, New York State Department of Transportation Commissioner, Matthew Driscoll, and please welcome Governor Andrew Cuomo. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to welcome everyone to historic Proctor's Theater Complex. Uh, it's a great day for Schenectady and just appreciate everyone coming out this afternoon. Before I begin, I just want to acknowledge some dignitaries in the crowd. Of course, uh, welcome back our great governor, Andrew Cuomo. Current Commissioner of uh, DOT and former Mayor of the City of Syracuse, Matt Driscoll. <laughs> State Senator James Tedesco. <laughs> Assemblymember Angelo Santa Barbara. <laughs> Assemblymember Mary Beth Walsh. Thank you for joining us. Where's the chair of the county legislature, Anthony Jasinski? There he is. Great partner. Just have the other members of the county legislature stand up that are also here. Ray Gillen, the uh, chair of Metroplex. Philip Morris, the driving force behind Proctor's Theater and the great entertainment venue that it is. Mary Cheeks and her team from uh, Rivers Casino. Where's Mary? Thank you, Mary, for all the work you do. <laughs> President Steady Mono from Schenectady County Community College. <laughs> Jeff Stark. Where's Jeffrey? Jeff, you're not usually quiet or demure there. It's the, from the uh, Capital Region Building and Construction Trades Council. Jeff, thank you for being here. And thank you for the work that the men and women that you represent do every day. Uh, where are my colleagues on the City Council? Council President uh, Perrazzo, Member Porterfield, Palomini, Kosher. Thank you. Rotterdam Town Supervisor Steve Tamazone. Where's uh, Dave Bucos here? And Dave DeMarco from Saratoga National Bank. Where's David? Thank you, too, for your investment in the community. I'm especially happy to welcome back Governor Cuomo to Schenectady. You know, since day one, the governor has been a friend of Schenectady and a great leader for upstate New York. The governor has transformed the relationship between Albany and upstate New York, and today New York State is making a transformational investment across the state, including here in Schenectady. You know, when we do these events, some of these things look easy, but Governor, I again just want to compliment you and the team that you have in place because there are a lot of moving parts in a number of these deals. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, we did a ribbon cutting for a housing project here. There were 10 different funding sources that had to come together to make that happen. A lot of effort at the local level, a lot of effort and time put in by the team in Albany to make sure that that was possible. And I'm proud to be working together to revitalize our economy, strengthen our community, and continue Schenectady's upward trajectory. In particular, Governor Cuomo recognizes, as we do, that our transit infrastructure is essential to the future of not only this community, but New York State as a whole. Uh, the prosperity in this city and the region so it's a pleasure to welcome him and his team back to Schenectady, and I look forward to our continued partnership to deliver for our residents of this community in this county. 
And now I'm pleased to welcome uh, a longtime friend, again, the former mayor of Syracuse, the commissioner of the New York State Department of Transportation, Matthew Driscoll. <laughs> commissioner, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here. I want to welcome all of you to Schenectady today as we make what is really an important announcement and one that impacts the future of rail transportation here in Schenectady and all across the capital region. Under Governor Cuomo's leadership, New York State's infrastructure is un undergoing an unprecedented transformation to meet the needs of the 21st century. This historical transformation includes enhancements at airports, roads, bridges, and yes, rail stations as well. The project here in Schenectady will transform the rail station, which is utilized by more than 60,000 people a year, into a truly great piece of architecture, really highlighting the importance of the place of Schenectady and the role that it plays in New York State's rich history. The old station was built back in 1978, and it had a footprint of about 1,710 square feet. The new station will have a 6,400 square foot uh, footprint, including a mechanical room and state-of-the-art concourse. Our goal here is to replace the 39-year-old structure with a 21st century facility that will be built to last. That's how the governor likes to build things. <clears throat> You know, in the process, it will greatly impact the state's booming tourism industry and really further the economic, economic development that takes place right here in the capital region and a lot of tourism that takes place right here as well. Phase one, which is well underway, includes the demolition of the existing station, and as I speak, it's nearly down, as well as a concrete work on the new platform, elevator shafts, stairway foundation, and some bridge work. Once this work is complete, construction on the new station will begin. It will be ADA compliant, have more capacity for seating, retail space, and of course be energy efficient. This is a region and a city with a rich history of innovation. And this innovation will be highlighted in prominent locations throughout the new station. Its design is inspired by the design of the former Union Station, which was built on the same site way back in 1910. Its main entrance will showcase a tremendous gold-domed clock tower topped with a weather vane in the shape of our great New York State. Images will depict the Erie Canal and the formal Alco train yard. Historical memorabilia will be featured in a new artifact wall highlighting Schenectady's important and rich history. It's going to be something special, that's for sure. The station, which will cost $23 million, complements three federally funded projects right here in the city of Schenectady. These projects, which amount to about $16.5 million in funding, include improvements to Erie Boulevard, including a $1.5 million project that is rehabbing it from Union Street to Knott Street this year. Another $11.5 million project was completed in 2015. It redeveloped the roadway from I-890 to Liberty Street with streetscape, traffic signal improvements, enhanced drainage, and new curbing and sidewalks as well. And last year, a $3.5 million project installed a roundabout at the intersection of Erie Boulevard, Knott, and Front Streets, helping to ease traffic congestion at that very busy location. No doubt the electric city is truly on the move. Just eight months ago, the State Department of Transportation completed a $4.6 million reconfiguration of I-890 Exit 4 interchange to ease traffic and improve safety for travelers. This was an interchange that was built back in the 60s, and as many of the GE commuters know, and students at Schenectady Community College would have told you, it was surely and sorely in need of 21st century solutions. And last summer, the State Department of Transportation completed a $1.8 million pedestrian safety project that added very important pedestrian signals and modern elevator-style push buttons to all 75 pedestrian signals on the 15 and a half miles of Route 5 corridor, which includes State Street right here in Schenectady. This followed an extensive 18-month Route 5 pedestrian safety traffic study that was commissioned by the Department of Transportation, and it was also followed by enforcement and education campaigns by our partners in local law enforcement, 
local government, and the traffic, uh, Governor's Traffic Safety Committee, and of course the State Department of Health, all who had the same goal, which was increasing safety for pedestrians. Meanwhile, the state is investing $200 million in trail improvements to create the Empire State Trail, which will be the largest, and I say the largest, state multi-use trail in the nation. You know, this is going to be a great project because the infusion here will close, close some of the most difficult gaps in existing trail infrastructure, but it's also going to create new trails all across the state. The Empire State Trail will, of course, pass right through here in Schenectady. These initiatives also complement $181 million invested by the governor in key rail improvement pro projects recently completed along the Empire Corridor in the Capital Region. And ladies and gentlemen, this is, and there is no doubt about it, an unprecedented investment in the future of New York State's transportation. New York State's infrastructure is experiencing a renaissance that would have not been possible without the uncompromising support of Governor Cuomo. Let's give him a big round of applause. You know, I have to tell you what's happening here in Schenectady is happening all across the state whether it's in Buffalo, whether it's in Long Island, uh, and all points in between, I can assure you the governor pays attention each and every day to the transportation projects that he wants to see get done and get done on time. Because really, a sound infrastructure leads to a sound future. Under the governor's leadership, New York State is building for the future a project at a time. It's really a great day a great day for the capital region and the city of Schenectady. And I, frankly, I'm proud to be part of it all. It's really my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce our friend, New York's Governor, Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it, it is, it is a great, great day, and it's my pleasure to be back in Schenectady. Uh, first, to your mayor, who's doing a great job. Let's give uh, Mayor McCarthy a big round of applause and thank you for his leadership. <laughs> to Commissioner Matt Driscoll, I worked at HUD for, uh, under President Clinton. I was Cabinet Secretary at Housing and Urban Development. Housing and Urban Development, you deal primarily with cities, so I would work with mayors all across the country. Uh, and I love mayors because mayors are in a job where you have to get things done, you know. Uh, you are so close to the community that they don't take a lot of baloney and people have problems and they know where you live and they see you in the supermarket. Uh, so you have a, a, an accountability that very few other offices have. So uh, I love to work with mayors and uh, Matt was a mayor of Syracuse. Uh, which is a big city. He had to get a lot of things done, and uh, that's why I love him as the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, because he just makes things happen. Let's give him a round of applause, <laughs> Commissioner Driscoll. We have my colleagues from the legislature who are here, Assemblywoman Mary Beth Walsh and Angelo Santa Barbara and Senator Jim, Jim Tedisco. Let's give them a round of applause. Ray Gillen, who's doing a beautiful job. Pleasure to be with you, Ray. And to Jeff Starks and all the men and women who are doing so much good work out there on their way in. Great to be with you, Jeff. And to Proctors, what an amazing uh, piece of history. Uh, and Philip Morris, uh, God bless you for what you do, because it really is a beautiful part, not just of Schenectady but it's a great treasure for the entire state of New York. Let's give them a round of applause. You know, today is a snapshot that uh, basically tells the whole story of what we're trying to do here in New York State. Uh, we have a new reality, a new recognition as a state government is concerned. Uh, we get now that the focus is about rebuilding the economy, because if the economy is running, then all the other problems you can take care of. The economy is the engine that pulls the train. 
Uh, and if the economy is running and you're creating jobs, then young people have a future, then businesses are coming, then people are paying taxes. And if people are paying taxes, then the city can do what it has to do and the county can do what it has, has to do. But you have to make that economy run. Uh, and it doesn't run on its own, you know. Uh, we had what I call a hangover New York arrogance, you know. We're in New York. Of course businesses are going to come here. Of course people are going to come here. We were the center of the universe for a lot of years. Uh, so we had that hangover attitude that, uh, of course, they're going to come and they're going to stay. Uh, if you torture businesses and people long enough, they will leave, you know. Uh, and we learned that as a state. We were not aggressive. We were not pro-business. There was also a manufacturing shift in the middle of it. Uh, but if you look at a map, around New York State, you'll see other shapes. You'll see shapes down south, shapes out west, squares, rectangles. Those are called other states. That's what those are called. <laughs> and they have uh, been found to be habitable. And if you keep taxing people, they will leave New York and they will find other places to go. Uh, we realize that. We recognize that. Uh, and we understood that we had to change our ways. And we did change our ways. Why are government taxes high? Because spending is high, right? You, government spends a lot of money, then it has to raise taxes. We have reduced state spending to record historic lows. What does that mean? Year-to-year -year increase in the state of New York government, in our budget, has been 2% or less for seven years. Now, what does 2% mean? It's the lowest rate of increase since they've been keeping numbers. Literally, literally. Well, how can that be? You're a Democrat. I thought Democrats were big spenders. I thought Republicans were people who were uh, tight on money and the Democrats, they were spendthrifts. No, 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 you thought wrong. That was just stereotypical. This is why uh, Senator Tedesco is always yelling. You know why he's always yelling? Because he's saying, how did I vote for all those fat budgets under George Pataki when now we could have had just 2%? That's what's driving him crazy. But you keep spending down low, then you get to cut taxes. And we did. Everybody in the state of New York pays a lower tax rate today than they did seven years ago. Everyone, everyone pays a lower tax rate. Middle class up to $300,000, lowest tax rate since 1947. Not adjusted with the cost of inflation, no gimmicks, lowest tax rate since 1947. Corporate tax rate, lowest since 1968. Manufacturing tax rate, lowest since 1917. So we can say to businesses, we're new and we're different. And that's a new reality for the state government. Another new reality is we readjusted our priorities. And we took out a map again. And I went to the state legislature and the assembly and the senate, which is predominantly from New York City. Why? Because when you look at the districts and the numbers, most of the representatives come from downstate, New York City and Long Island. And the majority in both houses is about New York City and Long Island. So I took out the map and I said, this is New York City and this is Long Island. It looks like that, a finger pointing east. And then you see the whole rest of the state, that's all called upstate New York. And upstate New York, had been given short shrift by the New York State Legislature for many, 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 many years. And upstate New York was actually the place that needed help. Why? Because upstate was facing the exodus of businesses. Upstate was going through that manufacturing transition and they were paying the price. New York City was actually doing relatively well economically, but upstate needed the help. 
and the state government was not there. We changed that 180 degrees. And I can't tell you how proud I am to be able to stand before you and say my administration has invested more in upstate New York than any administration in the history of the state of New York. We totally changed. We totally changed our priorities. Uh, and the other recognition is that government is a service bureau. Government is uh, an agency that is actually supposed to get something done. It's not supposed to talk about it. It's not supposed to issue press releases about it. It's not supposed to hope things happen. You're supposed to make things happen. It goes back to why I like mayors. Get it done. Make it happen. I'm thinking we should have a new train station in Schenectady. That's nice. Do it and do it fast and do it efficiently and do it effectively and do it right. You're building a public works. Make it something special. You're building something that our children are going to use. You're building something that's a statement of ourselves. Do it, make it happen. For too many years, state government in Albany was all gridlocked. Remember all the every year you'd come up to the budget discussion? We're going to get a budget. April 1 is the deadline for the budget. And you'd watch it on the local news. They'd have those interviews. They'd go to the legislative leaders. So do you think we're going to get a budget on time? Well, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to get a budget on time. You never got a budget on time. They went months late. Nothing happened. No, your job is to make things happen. And we're doing that in New York. We are doing in this state what all the great national leaders have talked about. Right? President Obama, President, uh, Vice President Biden, new President Trump, they all say the same thing. Infrastructure, build. Everything is collapsing. Invest in infrastructure. Yeah, except nobody's doing it. Except us. We have a $100 billion plan to build in New York. Most aggressive plan to build in New York since Robert Moses. Okay? Rebuilding LaGuardia Airport, downstate New York, is going to be the first one. LaGuardia Airport is going to be the first new airport in this country in 25 years. In the country. Think about that. You fly around to all these other countries, you land, they have these beautiful airports, modern, all new. We haven't built a new airport in the country in 25 years. It wasn't since Denver. LaGuardia is going to be the first. Rebuilding JFK Airport, rebuilding Rochester Airport, rebuilding Syracuse Airport, rebuilding Elmira Airport, rebuilding Plattsburgh Airport. $27 billion in roads and bridges all across upstate New York. New Tappan Zee Bridge, new rail system for downstate New York. Building that infrastructure that builds New York. That's what made New York, New York. We didn't just happen, we didn't just evolve. We made New York, and we now have to remake New York. And that is exactly what we're talking about today. Now, Schenectady, Capital District Region, has such a beautiful, profound history, and such an exciting future. I don't know that you feel it, you know, uh, I hadn't been here in a few months and driving in today, it's amazing how there's just a different feel and everywhere you look, there's construction, there's development, there's things going on, and it's all smart, right? The plan is to build on your assets. What are the assets? Great history of Schenectady, Proctor's Theater, celebration to the history and the greatness and the arts and the culture. Colleges, reconnecting with the colleges to foster them as a tool of economic development. The waterfront, Mohawk Harbor, yes, of course. <laughs> the mill development and the Rivers Casino, 1,000 jobs already at Rivers, and it's not even done yet. And today, 
This train station, which fits in with the overall plan of revitalization, plus redoing Erie Boulevard, which needs desperately to be redone and will connect the train station down to the casino. And now you start to see the picture coming together, right? You can start to feel it. And you can start to see how the pieces work together and how there's an energy and there's a synergy between them. I hope you feel it because it is a different day. And I was chatting with the mayor uh, before we came out. And I said, you know, you can feel it when you come into the city. You can really feel it when you come into the city. And I know it's hard because for so many decades, upstate New York was down. For so many decades, it was the same story. This one's leaving, this one's leaving. It was all bad, it was all decline. That story's over. We've taken our future into our own hands. We have a vision. We're building. People care about upstate. People care about Schenectady. We're putting our money where our mouth is. And you see it coming up out of the ground. Like a phoenix, it's rising. And you see how one piece complements the other piece. And the rivers is going to complement Mohawk Harbor, is going to bring more people into town. So we're going to have a new train station, more transportation. Tourism is a phenomenal engine for upstate New York. We invested $150 million in I Love New York ads. A lot of money. Revenue up over a billion dollars. Nobody knew what we had in upstate New York. It was like a hidden secret. Not only did we not help upstate New York, we didn't even tell the story. The legislature was so focused on downstate or just not getting anything done in the first place. We showed them what, they ha what we have in upstate New York. And the tourism numbers have gone through, that, through, through the roof. That Empire State Trail is going to bring more people up. First state in the country that's going to have a trail that goes the full distance, showing all our beauty. It is a new day, and the pieces are coming together. The numbers show it. This state just hit an all-time high in the number of private sector jobs in the state of New York, 8 million jobs. <laughs> Unemployment in the Capital District region six, seven years ago was 7% and change. Today it's 3% and change. That's where you see it. So, the arrows are pointed in the right direction. Uh, you're doing great. Jobs are being generated. Progress is here. The attitude is changing. The state is your partner. This train station is going to be a great addition. It's going to happen. It's going to happen fast. It's going to be done by the end of next year. Isn't that right, Commissioner Driscoll? Yes. He says it's right. And he says... If it's not done by the end of the next year, you can call him. His home phone number is 917-426. We're going to get it done. We're going to keep this development happening. Yesterday is gone. This is about tomorrow, my friends, and tomorrow is bright. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Governor. We appreciate your partnership and appreciate everyone coming out here today for this great announcement. You know, the Governor has made really such a significant difference not only in Schenectady, but in New York State. Let's give him another big round of applause. <laughs> governor, you're always welcome in Schenectady. Thank you for coming out today.